Hey guys, welcome back to Puff It Louder. So today we're going to be giving Okita some blood. Here we go, yum yum. Uh, I already read this line, whoops. As he struggled through short, staggered breaths, Okita blurted out a question. <laughs> Oh, okay. No. It pained me too much to watch him writhe on the floor helplessly. But if you drink my blood, oh God, he's really struggling. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I can't do this. I couldn't just walk out on Okita, who was forced to endure the overwhelming anguish alone. Without hesitating, I unsheathed my Kodachi. Here you go. I carefully slid the sharp blade across my palm. Blood began to drip from the open wound. As Okita glanced at me with desperate eyes, I held out my blood-drenched hand to him. I'm sorry for second-guessing it. Please, drink my blood, Okita. <laughs> Okita's red eyes dilated, a glassy haze covering them, and then... Picture get... Ew. He inched his mouth closer to my palm. Ew. I felt a dull pain as the suckle of his warm mouth drew my blood into his full, tender lips. This is the grossest line I've ever read in my life. Ew. The bloodlust had rendered him ravenous, and as he sucked more forcefully, a pressure shot up the length of my arm in rhythm with his heavy breathing. He spoke as if he were making an oath to me. The, uh, I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> His somber promise made my chest tighten. They were comfortless words, which brought me closer to crying. Okita. It was possible that a time would come when, no matter how much blood I gave him, the pain suffered from his affliction would be un unabattable. I'd seen so many warriors from the Kefiri Corps succumb to such a fate. Against my best wishes, I was sure that the curse or the curse of the Fury would soon devour his body, eventually reducing both his mind and body into nothingness. However, when it appeared that Okita had finished drinking my blood, he began to mutter softly. What are you apologizing for, Okita? That's terrible! It's not like that. Don't worry about my hand. The wound will heal immediately. It was difficult to respond quickly. I was so astonished by his request. But without giving it much more thought, I stared Okita in the eye and told him, I will be by your side, Okita, no matter what. I made a vow to him, just as he did to me moments earlier, and together we nodded. Well, the following evening, I wrote a letter addressed to Dr. Matsumoto. As soon as he got word of our return in Edo, he visited us in the hiding place immediately. However, he was not alone. Sen? Oh my god, you guys are alive! Sen and Kimikiku too? What are the two of you doing here? Oh my god, I'm so happy. I'm surprised to see you're with Dr. Matsumoto. Oh, 
<笑>ご心配なさっていたのですが。<笑> Matsumoto-sensei,聞かせてもらったから。After um, Okita's interruption, er, interruption, Sun's expression suddenly dropped. 実はね。Oh. R really? Sun glanced over at Kimigiku, who nodded in agreement to Sun's news. Mm, this does not look like good news. Increase the potency? Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, but even if my father is the only one who has any of this information, he's still nowhere to be found. Sen's face suddenly beamed with a bright grin. What? Are you serious? Oh, birds. Oh, God. It's like Game of Thrones. What's his name again? Varys. There we go. So, where is my father? Why is he hanging out there? My birthplace? Okay. I can't thank you enough, Sen. Oh, God. If my father actually were continuing his research on the water of life, even after being detached from the Shinsengumi, perhaps he was able to find the breakthrough that had eluded Sen on for so long. I pondered the possibility of finding a cure that could reverse the effects of the serum permanently. I found myself compelled to glance at Okita, who had surely had his own thoughts on the matter. Okita turned his head inquisitively. I... I want to see my father. And beyond finding him, if there was any chance of us finding the antidote for the water of life, then I wanted to give Okita the chance to reclaim his humanity. But if this was to be my quest, then I may need to be separated from Okita. Yikes. Sun's tone was rather suggestive, as if she had more to say, and she looked at Dr. Matsumoto. The doctor pinched his fingers on the bridge of his nose between his brows, stroking in deep thought. His look it looked as if something troubled him. What was wrong? What could the doctor want to say? I braced myself for the worst case scenario, breathing in deeply as I waited for him to speak. After a tense moment, Dr. Matsumoto turned his gaze towards Okita, sighing heavily. Oh no. Is he dead? Okita's face turned pale almost instantly. His lips began to quiver uncontrollably. What? 
に言ってるんですか I thought it was me. 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 Okita, please calm down. I tried to grab him from behind as he began thrashing about. Oh God. How could Kondo have surrendered everything to the Imperial Army? Could it really have happened? Why? So, what does this mean for the Shinsengumi? If Kondo surrendered, does it mean. I don't know. 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 However, I could see him surrendering if it meant keeping Kondo safe while in enemy clutches. Or at least, this is what I would have expected from Hijikata. Okay, God, he's screaming. Okita's veins were popping from his forehead. Speaking the truth. Wow, rude. Okita! I admonished Okita for taking his frustrations out on Sen, who'd only wanted to help, but he acted as, as if we were in any position to act hastily, and he directed his next question to Dr. Matsumoto. もう君一人でどうにかできる事態じゃなくなっちまってる。Okita's head dropped low, and he became despondent. His cheeks turned pale as the realization began to sink more deeply, and his shoulders trembled. Then, Kondo is. Dr. Matsumoto sighed deeply. No! Kondo had given his life, everything, for years to both the Shogunate and the Supreme Commander. And after all that he had sacrificed, they were intent on abandoning him towards the very end? Okita stood still, simmering in his angry mood. He turned his back from us and tried leaving the room without saying a word. Dr. Matsumoto tailed right behind him, grabbing a hold of his shoulder to stop him from going any further. Jesus. Dr. Matsumoto paused as if he was searching for a precise combination of words to avoid offending Okita. Oh, yikes. 
Someone slap him. Okita was cut short, just as he was raising his voice. Oh, God. Okita! Okay. I began tending to Okita's bed, just as the doctor had instructed. <sighs> it's fine. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. By now, Okita had lost consciousness, and he was drenched in sweat. Ever since drinking the water of life, Okita's tuberculosis symptoms had subsided a bit. But between the journey to Kofu and his battle with Kaoru, his body had regressed from all the excess stress, even more than I had anticipated. I truly appreciated Sun's offer, but... You already know the answer to this. Uh, I nodded. Exactly. I'm so sorry. You came all this way to deliver the information about my father, too. ただ、くれぐれも気をつけてね。松本先生の言葉通り、神聖不軍は近藤さんを厳重に監視してるみたいだから。さて、それじゃあ我々はそろそろ失礼させてもらうよ。Okay. <笑><笑> okay. Thank you so much for today. 礼には及ばんさ。だが、沖田君を近藤さんの元に行かせてはならんぞ。彼は 自分の命などどうでもいいと言っていたが、近藤さんだって沖田君の命と引き換えに生き延びたいなんて思っちゃいないはずだ。うん。That's true. Okay. Thank you. I bowed deeply as I watched Dr. Matsumoto, Sun, and Kimikiku file out of the room. A few days passed since their visit, and I had spent most of the time tending to Okita's critical condition. The thought of Kondo in captivity made me shiver with anxiety, so I was a bit distracted, but Okita promised me that he would put all of his focus into recuperating before leaving the hiding place. Okita, are you still awake? I'm coming in. I called his name through the sliding door, and as I softly opened it, I found Okita standing tall. Hey! What do you think you're doing, Okita? Why are you out of bed? What are you going to do if you start coughing again? Ugh. Sword? Don't tell me you plan on leaving to find Kondo, especially in your condition. You're a dumbass. <laughs> I felt a slight sense of relief. Sure. This one? I grabbed the sword on top of the rack sitting across from Okita's futon, and I offered it to him with both of my hands. I felt a significant weight in the sword, which looked rather unfamiliar to me as I handed it to Okita. Okita took the sword from me, and his eyes thinned as his gaze ran up and down the length of the sword. Mm, that sword, it looks different from the one you normally use. Okita said nothing, as if he didn't hear me. Kondo? He let out a melancholy chuckle before beginning to detail his dream. Whoa! Flashback. This must have been... Three years ago, when the shogunate ordered us to do the second Choshu expedition, Kondo stopped by my room. Soji. Oh, Soji's room. Soji's <laughs> そういうわけにはいかんさ。これは幕府直々の命令だからな。じゃあ僕も一緒に行きます。
長州なんかに行ったらいつ暗殺されるかわからないじゃないですか。カンダ's expression held firm and it was far more stern than usual。ダメだ、どこは許さん。Whoa, he looks really pissed。どうしてです？近藤さんを守るのは僕の役目でしょ。But even if I wanted him to, Kondo had no interest in answering my question. He just glanced over to his side, grabbed the sword on the rack next to him, and he handed it to me. Okay, that's a tongue twister in half. <laughs> okay. Chrysanthemum sword, wow. I remember absent mindedly mentioning something about it to Kondo a while before, but. And then Kondo looked me dead in the eye, and I'd never seen him more serious than in that moment. Oh no. My stomach dropped, like all the blood in my body just seeped from my feet. I mean, for me to succeed him as the teacher of the Tenen Rishin style must mean. Kondo stared at me as like I was a young child, which made it difficult to feel like my words had any weight, but eventually. そう言ってくれるのはありがたいが、今はいつ何時毎日のことがあるかわからん時代なんだ。俺は百姓の生まれながら、武士となった今、いつでも将軍公のためこの命を捨てる覚悟をしている。だが、もし天然理心流の名が俺の代で耐えてしまうことになったら、死んでも死にきれんよ。I just kept looking down, but I felt Kondo wrap his warm hand around my shoulder. And he placed the sword in my hands. He knew he was gonna die. And we're gonna stop here! That's so sad. Kondo knew he was. Walking off to his fucking grave, and he still tried to give Okita like a good last moment. That's so depressing. God. Ugh. Next episode, ugh, I guess we'll see if we can save Kondo before he fucking dies. <laughs>